Gentlemen, welcome back to the sh wait, that's the other guy, right? So there is this thing, right? Uh, I start this new YouTube channel and I say I'm going to tear down like 30 or 40 power supplies and then I'm gonna do other stuff as well. So here's milling. So my milling setup is an X-Carve. Uh, I put a Cress FME 1050 one and a half horsepower uh, spindle on it. There's a uh, big vacuum plate and as you can see I've already had some apprentice marks. Wait, that's the other guy again, right? Controlling all of this is this very nice PCB wrapped in... Uh, and underneath that is another temporary thing, uh, a 24 volt open frame power supply which I will be tearing down next. And controlling all of this is this PC. This runs some kind of uh, web-based CAD thingy. So you remember this, right? This is my company logo. Uh, uh, good background. Eh. Uh, I, this is like the first thing I milled and it went pretty well. Uh, so right afterwards I thought, let's try milling the cover plates for Plank 2's, uh, one of my computer's speakers. And it turned out horrible. Uh, eventually the mill bit broke as well, so obviously I I didn't know what I was doing. So I won't go into the details of how milling works, but I do have a few pointers for people uh, wanting to use the X-Carve. Not just the X-Carve, basically any like hobby, small project type uh, milling machine. These frames are very flexible, very weebly wobbly. And this means that if there's forces like this mill, if it's if it's going against an edge and it's chipping away, every time it takes a chip, it gets a little bit of force like this. So it, it gets wobbled a bit. This means you will get very irregular edges. So what you want to do is you want to make sure at every stage that your machine is as rigid as possible. So that means in this case, these these bits, these mill bits, they have a giant shank, the, the, the flat part. Like the actual milling part, it's only seven millimeters, the rest gigantic. You just want to put the mill bit in for as far as it goes, but not past the neck. So not past the part where it starts tapering. Mm. Mm. You see, it flexes. This is the machine standing still, still flexes if I put force on it. The same obviously goes for the other side, and this is a bit of an issue. Um, so you want to make sure your workpiece, whatever you're using, like right now I'm going to mill something out of plate, it should be fastened as rigidly as possible to your work surface. So what I have here is I have a big MDF plate with the aluminum uh, vacuum table. I'm not going to use the vacuum function because my pump kind of broke down, but that's another story. Um, we're going to tape it to the, um, to the vacuum table as rigidly as possible. We're going to do, do that with thin double-sided tape and I highly recommend using the white type tape. So this kind of very wide strips of tape. Cut to your chum, not your thumb. Don't forget to also thoroughly clean the side you're going to tape because it's gonna have fingerprints all over and it won't stick very well. So I use plate stock uh, I just bought like 10 pieces of 30 by 40 centimeter uh, various thickness aluminum so I can just do stuff. With these machines something that I find very handy is you can just move it around with your hand. I'm just, I'm just pushing it, pushing it around. Uh, the only thing you cannot do is adjust the z-axis, so you need to do that by software because it's, uh, it's done with a berm gear, uh, so me.
also is running now. And one of the nice things about these desktop machines is that they actually run pretty quiet. And the cool thing about aluminum is that you can just lubricate it with water. So I'm just dumping water over this and hoping the chips get removed into the water. Uh, that's not really a good idea, but for these really low removal projects it's fine. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. If you tell me that your name is Tommy, I can, I'm willing to accept that on face value with no other, no other evidence required. Because for one thing, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your name is Bill or Steve or whatever. It's done. Oh. Eh, done. Uh, it looks like shit right now because still has the cover uh, covering material on it and still has some pieces of metal in it. So just going to clean it up and show you the end result. So this is the finished product and it looks really, really neat. Uh, the edges are really good. Uh, but plank is a dark blue color and uh, aluminum just doesn't look good. Also, I scratched it here and there, so it definitely needs to go to paint. Number one rule with paint is get it absolutely clean. I use brake cleaner for basically everything except for plastics because it kind of does bad things to plastic. Also, very important, if you ever do welding work never use brake cleaner because it uh, under extreme heat it decomposes in all kinds of like toxic chemicals i don't know exactly what but never do it second rule of painting especially when spray painting make sure it's suspended like in the middle of a room so you can easily go around it so you're not like what I did is I suspended it on some wire on a piece of scrap metal with some double-sided tape on the non-facing side um, yeah it really needs to be suspended so you can get everywhere So with this done, I guess we need to do the other side. And the Pixies decided to make a second one. No, I actually milled it. We're probably gonna need a couple of standoffs as well. <laughs> <laughs> 